Okay, start. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our welcome to our Huawei App HMS Innovation Contest. My name is Omar Ahmed. Pro, uh, I am senior developer technical support engineer from Mia Huawei Mobile Services. I am one from our DTSE team. The DTSE team is exists here today to help you to know more about HMS and how to use Huawei Mobile Services in your app and answering your questions. So, uh, at first, let's take a quick brief about the HMS uh, App Innovation Contest. As you know, this competition aims to showcase the work of talented developers in five global regions, Europe, Asia Pacific, Latin America, Middle East and Africa, and China. Now let's take a look about the contest, the contest schedule. At the end of July, we start app up contest to be alive and from the end of july to the end of august we planned a live workshops to help the developers with their integration with the hms and that uh, the 21 of september we will make announcement to the top 20 apps and after this we will continue the public review At, uh, after this, we will continue the public review until the 4th of October. Uh, and uh, at the end, we will make announcement to the final ceremony. So here we can see the contest stages that we have. At the first stage, we will have uh, a known number of uh, APKs and ideas. So at the first stage, you need to uh, sign up. Uh, and submit your works and after this uh, all these apps and ideas will be under uh, reviews from our expert to select the top 20 app uh, that we, we will have so after we having the top 20 apps we will make a public review for them and um from our judging panel we will select the eight winners of this competition when we say you need to submit your works you need to release uh, your uh, app at the huawei app gallery and you need to integrate with you, you need to integrate your app with the atom score. this is the two main parts of this competition you need to release it at the huawei app gallery and uh, integrate, uh, integrating your app with the HMS score. So now let's talk about the prices that are provided by Huawei at this convention. Uh, at the first, at the first uh, category, we have five mo uh, most outstanding apps that will win uh, fifteen thousand dollar. And also, we have three mo most outstanding game with the same price, uh, fifteen thousand dollar. Uh, and also, we will have three most social impact apps with $15,000. And we will have one popular app with $5,000. And we will have 12 Henry Mansion apps with $2,000. Let's talk about our live shows. Um, at 13th of July, we uh, opening the ceremony at the MIA region. And uh, at the 15th of July, uh, my colleagues was talking about uh, toolkits workshop. And at the 20th of July, uh, my other colleagues talking about the postkit workshop. And at the previous workshop, I talked about the Huawei ads kit. And uh, today, uh, for the 27th of July, um, I am today. We're talking about the analytics kit, and uh, you shouldn't miss the uh, augmented reality workshop at the 5th of August 
that will coming soon. And at the mid of October, we will make the announcement for the final ceremony. If you need to keep um, yourself follow up for this competition, and you want to know what's happening in this competition, you can always follow us, follow us um, at the Facebook, as you see here, and at the Twitter, as you see here. And you can also find all the, all details that you want to know about this competition about uh, at our website. And if you have any question and you or you need to know more about the HMS or our services, you can always go to developer.tawau.com to know more about these competitions and our kits and everything that you need to know. Thank you for listening for this brief, uh, brief about this competition. Now. Let's talk about the analytics kit. So today we will talk about the capabilities of analysis service and its features, as well how to make your application fast access to it. Also, you can be a fast learner of the strong and comprehensive data analysis capabilities of the system. And uh, fully extracting the value out for uh, out of uh, user behavior and attribute data is key for staying relevant with a con constantly charging audience uh, and uh, also uh, you can get more out of the data your app collects so you can get closer to how your user think and what they want So at first, what is the analytics kit? The analytics kit, it's a set of data collection and analysis system provided by Huawei for developers through data-driven services by its powerful data analysis capability and its data collection collecting capability provided by analytics kit. We can collect a large number of valid data. With this data, the system also presents many of analysis tables which assist us clearly understanding user behavior, user behavior modes, realizing the deep inside of user uh, products and contents. You can make data-driven operation and smart decision by application marketing and product optimization. So this is the analytics kit in general, and you can use a few line of codes in your app, and you will get a huge data that you need about your uh, about your users to more understanding the user behaviors. And also, these analytics kits um, uh, have some functions like intelligence dashboard, um, that uh, we will use the intelligence dashbo dashboard for monitoring app performance in uh, preset and custom dashboard for past operation. And also we have uh, diverse analysis model, analysis events audience, uh, Funnels, uh, attribution behaviors, uh, retention, real time data, and app version for data driven app lifecycle management. And also, we have app debugging that allow final debugging on data reporting, preventing tracing point uh, option and data event uh, attribute setting errors. So, this is our, our main function that we have. So, uh, now let's move to talk about the advantages and capabilities of analytics kit. One, simple and efficient access. This is mainly about the data collection capability, which are reflected in the following aspects. Firstly, it offers more. Uh, it, it offers over uh, 30 predefined events and 500 custom events. Secondly, it's uh, supported real-time debugging, and we have provided various predefined analysis models for real-time analysis of data, and we provide close-the-loop marketing of users. Three, safe and reliable data service. The security of our data has passed the GDPR General Data Protection Regulation, the, uh, regulation the announcement user and uh, perso uh, personal data between different apps, both of these uh, double measure protect the user data privacy during the process of data collection and transmission. 
So now we'll talk about the benefits benefits of the uh, strong and data collection capability. The end SDK have three data collection methods. One support automatic collection of events. The SDK provides a mass of automatic collection event, events such as application installation, startup, updates, uninstall, activity enter and exit, and a lot of things. All of the data of these events can be collected and reported automatically without even tracking by user, which greatly facilitates the developers. However, the ID of these events are reserved the field of analytics kit and cannot be reused. Uh, second, we support users define property settings. All events in some public data have uh, have always been reported by developers, such as a version, device information, location, user ID, name and date, and more than the, more than the, the, these things. The SDK provide, uh, provides some different properties, such as uh, app version, device model, location. Uh, it uh, also provides users uh, defined uh, property settings. Uh, you, need, you need to know that you can resolve uh, 25 properties at most from the user settings. These properties can serve as filter criteria for waving events. For example, the, the user older than uh, 30 who buy this mobile phone. Therefore, as the key can analyze our events data more accurately. Three, provide event tracking and reporting interface. It refers to code level custom events and present events, uh, events name and the parameter are needed when we report events to provide the developer with convenience as the key, with, with convenience as the key. provides many present events. For example, viewing details, adding to favorite, or shopping, uh, shopping cards, and a lot of things that you need to use this uh, in, your, in your app. Uh, developers can directly employ the name, uh, the names, and uh, uh, apparent matter provided by the SDK to report uh, events quickly. With more according to specific scenarios, some uh, funnel models are defined as associate, associating some present events such as registration convenience funnel, uh, community conversation funnel, and uh, providing user with a convenient and analysis service. So, secondly, we will talk about the powerful analysis capability. From the previous introduction, we can taste the convenient and powerful analysis service provided by this SDK. Next here are the main capabilities of SDK in cloud. We can introduce a few important functions that we have. The first one is the dashboard. The, the dashboard is focused on display of core data indicators of an app such as uh, new users, user activity, and a lot of, a lot of activity that relate to the user. And provide access to event and, uh, and analysis, activity analysis, uh, assets developer, uh, assets developer uh, quickly understanding the recent data performance of the app in general. Uh, the second one, it's uh, the, uh, the second is event analysis. Analytics key proceed rate event, uh, event analysis capability. It support automatic collection of events, uh, uh, collection of events uh, predefined and custom events, and aggregate the reported ev uh, event data by event ID. You can view the event overview and event analysis details. For example, the overall trend of events, model distribution, and system version distribution uh, of sourcing. Uh, you can also view a list of all events, including event name, event ID, number uh, of events per day, average number of users per day, um, bear capture number, and another information. Uh, there is something we should know from user properties and audience. These two dimensions, we can select different criteria of filter 
the events you prefer to realize accurate analysis since we have briefly introduced the user uh, properties then we go to introduce the audience analysis so the third one is the, the audience other analysis first of all let's talk about what's audience it's mean through user conditions um, attribution uh, attribution behavior user are divided into several groups based on the analysis of audience now the way can you uh, find out what kind of user your product is more attractive to but i also make different optional strategies for different audience so as to improve the quantity of experience and our uh, pursing and live in spe specific country All of these can be completed as filter conditions for event analysis, uh, event data, more accurately with Huawei Post Services. We can send the accurate operation information to audience, which are directly connected in the cloud. Uh, so we we'll now talk about the fourth one, which is the uh, funnel analysis. As we all know, funnel is always of the filtering by creating a variety of uh, funnel data, we can analyze the conversation of a key steps in business to identify key notes that impact experience and conversation provided, providing basis for um, the, the users. The funnel analysis service has three predefined funnels which is our regist uh, registration uh, conversation uh, funnel and e-commerce uh, conversation funnel and search conversation funnel. This funnel option make us easily select the uh, result data we want. And we have user behavior, as you see here. We also have the user behavior analysis, including event analysis, page analysis, activity analysis, and um, session path analysis and launching uh, analysis. We will talk about every uh, each one of them um, as a brief a brief uh, one. So let's start with the event analysis. The event analysis display the event overview and event analysis details such as the event trend, event source model distribution, and event source system version distribution. And for uh, uh, the batch analysis. Uh, it will display the access trend, access depth, and the uh, stay duration of different pages in the app to determine the importance of each page and provide data supporting for page optimization strategies. And also we have the lunch analysis, which they will display the number of uh, lunch time and uh, time segments and compare the data with the industry benchmark for further analysis. Session path analysis. Uh, it will display the behavior path of users, provide product manager, uh, managers and uh, operation, operations personal with key data about users, uh, about users' action in apps and the uh, process of uh, leaving apps. And also we have the activity analysis, which will display the user activity, which is a key indicator for product uh, sickness and health. Through activity analysis, you can understand user dependencies on your um, on your uh, product. And also, we have the attribution analysis uh, of an um, app event. It's used to uh, measure the contribu contribution of uh, a to be attribu attributed event, for example, Bosch message tab event, uh, to the trigger conversation events uh, like. Uh, Versus events, and you can define target conversation events and to be attributed events, and select uh, and select an attribution model to generate an attribution analysis report. This helps identify the marketing channel conversation effect and adjust policies in a timely manner. And also, we have 
the uh, we have the retention analysis. It's critical to up growth and operation. The retention rate represents user continuous insert uh, in products and is one of the main uh, indicators for measuring the core values of products. Through retention analysis, you can understand the continuous attractions of your product uh, to user to users. And also, we have the real time analysis that will help product managers and operation um, operation manager understanding the product performance from the real time multi-dimensional display of the most popular event and event parameter and we also we have the values our data are safe and fully in compliance with the gdpr data protection protocol of eu we fully uh, guarantee the ownership of data entities such as the following rights the rights to know the rights to visit, the rights to reject, the rights to limit the processing, and also the right to delete, also known as the right to forget, and the right to carry data to automation decision. We protect the data in uh, full compliance with the GDPR standard of EU. So this is uh, a small introduction about the analytics kit and how you can uh, use the analytics kit. Um, now, I guess we having uh, some CP sharing for us to share their experience with uh, to share their experience with our uh, kids. So, before we uh, moving to the uh, before we going to our code lab. We having some CP with sharing his uh, his experience with our SDKs. Hi, everybody. Hello, Mr. Peter. Hey, uh, you can start now. All right. Please share your... Okay. Thank you so much. They're called Namola. And uh, we produce... For that reason, we created Namola to provide a, uh, a better safety experience for South Africans. What I'm going to take you through today is how Namola integrated Huawei mobile services into our app to enable the best possible experience for our Huawei users. Um, the specific frameworks that we've integrated are account kit for single sign-on, account kit SMS retriever for mobile number verification, location kit for real-time and background locations, map kit for showing travel histories and locations, and push kit for smart alerts and newsfeed broadcasts. Just to give you a sense of how Namola works, it lets you do location sharing, so uh, in a cross-platform manner, so for example, if I need to know where my wife or my children are, I can do that in a cross-platform manner. I can also set up what we call smart alerts. Smart alerts let me get a notification whenever my loved ones leave or arrive safely um, 
And um, we also now have a safety news feed that is geared towards communities being able to share things that are concerning about community safety. So when we got started with Huawei Mobile Services towards the end of last year, it took us about one developer week to take our um, Android code base and to replace uh, references to Google Mobile Services with Huawei Mobile Services. So the first step was to um, set up the Android Studio build infrastructure specifically Maven and Gradle, to use the HMS SDK. The second step we did was to write a wrapper to abstract in our Java code base any calls that were previously made directly to GMS. We rather abstracted it so that there is a wrapper class that uh, the code would call, and then depending on the build settings, um, if we made a GMS build, the wrapper class would uh, then, then pass that information through the GMS APIs. And if it was a, an a app gallery build, it would uh, pass the settings through to um, uh, the, the, the HMS frameworks. The third step was just to set up different build targets in Android Studio for GMS and HMS. And this allows us to share like 99.9% .9 of our code between these two frameworks while still providing uh, the end users with the correct builds that we then just publish to the correct um, store, either Google Play or the App Gallery. Um, SMS Retriever, Push Kit, and Location Kit were probably about two developer days in total across all three of those frameworks. Map Kit took a little bit more work, but that was also only about two developer days. And then the Account Kit single sign-on took around another day. Account Kit is super, super simple to use if you've ever used any other kind of OAuth framework like what um, uh, uh, Facebook or um google etc do so for the uh single sign on that's a screenshot there from our first screen in the app as you can see if you are um an app gallery user you get the option to sign into our app with a, a, a huawei id and if a user pushes that um they get to authorize the app, and then as soon as they've authorized the app, we can see um, the user's first name, last name, email address, and um, a profile picture if that is set. And as I mentioned, this is just a very standard OAuth flow, so if you are at all familiar with that, integrating with Account Kit should be an absolute breeze. Um, because locations are so important to our app, either when you are location sharing or when you press the SOS button inside our app, uh, location kit is at the heart of our app. So this lets us get the GPS locations while the users are, users, uh, are using the app. And we also have a whole bunch of background triggers to detect location changes when the user is not actively using the app. And then as soon as we determine that a user is now moving, we start a foreground service uh, while the user is driving to allow for real-time trip sharing and so that we can power all this stuff about notifying the user's contacts that the user has left their current location as well as when they've arrived safely at their destination. Finally, uh, MapKit. Um, because our app is so heavily reliant on apps, um, you can see a screenshot there from my app. Um, uh, we, we present a lot of this location information, such as on this previous slide that I've just gone back to, uh, where we show polylines for users of their trips, as well as just the real-time locations of all the contacts. Um, MapKit is very important for us. It's nearly a drop-in replacement for Google Maps. So um, if you're used to using Google Maps, MapKit is not all that much different. 
And um, yeah, as you can see, even doing slightly more advanced things like rendering polymaps and custom markers on the map are still 100% possible without a, a whole lot of effort. And then obviously Pushkit, very important to us um, to send users notifications of uh, their contacts when they leave and arrive or when they um, enter specific geo uh, fences, as well as our community news feed. And the Pushkit integration, again, super simple and very similar to what the other big mobile platforms do. And the, the one thing to remember about Pushkit is that there is a little bit of server side work um, that might be required just to be able to deliver those push notifications from your server to the HMS infrastructure. Why did we decide to use Huawei mobile services in addition to the other versions of our app that are also out there. For us, it's the standard things that all small development shops, of which many of you um, are probably in a similar situation. For all app developers, it's about growth, engagement, as well as having a technology advantage. So our users absolutely love the Huawei handsets. Huawei by far the uh, second biggest handset manufacturer in South Africa. Um, and users love those handsets because of their great, um, they, they are fairly inexpensive in our local currency and the build quality is just amazing for that price that you get. So many users in South Africa use Huawei. Um, they are a huge part of our user base. Um, when I pulled some stats, um, Huawei accounts for probably about 30% of recent signups um, of Namula users. So that is a very substantial user base. And obviously because they are so big and because they love their, their phones so much, we want to provide them with the best user experience. For example, I can very confidently say that, um, you know, with the, with the location tracking being so important to what we do at Namola, that our HMS build definitely uh, performs better than the equivalent GMS build, even on um, non-Huawei handsets. Um, well, HMS does better on Huawei handsets than GMS does on non-Huawei handsets. We've also been getting a lot of great support from the Huawei team. Um, it is uh, really great working with a global company like Huawei that still finds the time to speak to smaller developers like us here at the southern tip of Africa. Um, also, as you are probably aware a lot of the app stores are very full of a lot of apps from America and Europe, etc. And then sometimes developers like us who come from regions of the world um, with local problems and, you know, slightly different local social dynamics, uh, we, we have a tough time standing out from the crowd. If you decide to get your app into the app gallery using the HMS frameworks, it's a lot easier to, to stand out from the crowd with the kind of curation that the app gallery provides. And lastly, while Namula is currently only available in South Africa, we are having plans to, in the next six months to a year, start launching in a lot of other emerging markets that have similar safety concerns to what we have here in South Africa. And because Huawei is incredibly strong in a lot of emerging markets, also through the rest of Africa, um, partnering now and then having our app expand into those other regions through the app gallery, again, gives us a, a bit of a leg up and make sure that as we grow, um, that we remain available wherever users use the kind of technologies that we are already using. And that is everything from my side. I want to thank Huawei for all their support over the last two years with everything that we have been doing here at Namola.
Thank you, Peter. Um, okay. Uh, if you have any questions, you can drop your questions at the box at the right, and we will answer all your questions that you have. Uh, now we will sharing our uh, code labs. Uh, the code lab is uh, pre-recording uh, before to. And we will show the our code lab. How you can start with how you can start with the analytics kit. So at first you need to go to the uh, Huawei developer website and you can click at develop tab and you can click at analytics kit and it will open this page. From this page we will navigate to the code lab. Uh, and the code lab you can find uh, the definitions of the analytics kit and he will remind you to uh, about these things that we said before at the presentation uh, you have uh, automatic collection of uh, custom events and we set up uh, the user you can set up the uh, 25 user attributes and you can automatic event collections and session calculations and predefined events ID and parameter. We will make uh, our code today that would collect uh, uh, our data at the analytics cloud. As you see, we'll find device model, package name, channel ID, a lot of things. So we will learn how to use um, and, uh, Android Studio to integrate the uh, analytics kit capability and how to use the analytics kit correctly. So what will we need to start our integration? From the hardware requirements, you need a Huawei device with HMS core. If you don't have this one, you can always use our service that exists. Uh, it's called the cloud debugging that you can use. And you can you can test your app at the cloud. And you have uh, you should have software requirements like our well, text kit to uh, five uh, zero one. And you need the Android SDK with KitKat. And you need Android Studio. And you need Java SDK with one point seven or later. Now, before we starting the integration, we need to create an app in App Gallery Connect, creating an Android Studio project. Generating signing certificate fingerprint, configuring signing, uh, signing certificate fingerprint, and adding the package name to save the configuration file, then configuring map, then configuring signing file in Android Studio. So let's start uh, step by step. So here I already signed at the uh, Huawei developer account. And we will click at App Gallery Connect, as you see here. I already make uh, a project before, so I will go to my project. And here I will find the project that I make it for this workshop. So here, you need to make sure you enabling the analytics from the managing APIs as like this. And then you need to add your package name, as you see here, and you can find your app ID. And here you can download the edge connect JSON file. And you need to add your certificate fingerprint. So if you see this command, you can read this command at the location of the key tool that you have, and will give you something like this. And you need to copy your signing fingerprint that will be exist here and then adding it to the console that you can see as I adding it here. So now let's move to the Android Studio to make our project. So we'll select empty activity. We'll copy this name to naming this app like this. And we will uh, we will naming it like workshop. 
And when I will click finish, after the create creation, we need to go to our developer account, click add daisy connect from file. We need to download the JSON uh, connect file and copying it and putting them at the same level of the app. So here we're opening our project as a project structure and then we will select the app and pasting the AG Connect JSON file. Here you can find the package name and API key and app ID and all of the data that related to uh, Huawei console. So this is at the first. Now we need go to our back to our uh, steps. Here I see he told me to do things that I make it uh, before. Okay, now he told me at the project level we need to add uh, the Maven repository. So I will go to the build grad at the same project level and adding Maven repository. As you see here. And then I will call, uh, I will copy the dependencies that we have. And okay. And at the build gradle at the same level of the app. Uh, like this. And we need to add the plugin. And we need to add the dependency that we need to use, which is the analytics kit. So we need to put the analytics kit. Okay, like this. And then I will click at the sync. Okay, everything is syncing successfully now. As you see, now we need, if you are using uh, Resource Grad, you need to add the sophistication code, but for now I didn't using, so I will not add this code. Okay, he, he told me to go to, to the repository and then completing the steps that we have here. At first, let's go to the repository that we have. Here you can find the main code of the sample. So at first, we need to go to the main activity. At the main activity, you will find all this code. After these things, all, all of these things is related to the UI. We need just to showing some buttons and text uh, to click on them to sending some events to the server. So this just for the UI. And this one is very important. Here we initializing a new instance from, from the high analytics kit. And at the auto only create, we enabling the logs and uh, creating an instance uh, from the high analytics kit, as you see here. And we importing these things that we need. After initializing this, here, as you see, just uh, binding some uh, UI with the code, he defining button strings that will open strings activity. And we have a button next that will loading the next question, uh, as we will see at, uh, at the runtime. As you see here. Uh, here we have also the button true. If you click on true, it will send true event to the server. And we have false also, we'll send the answer false to the server out to our console. We have also post score. The post score will send a custom event to the console itself also. So we'll copy all these things and pasting them like this. It's all just defining some UI and binding them. Now we need to import the required things that we need. Okay, it looks nothing to import. 
we will minimize this one. We need to implement the functions that we need. This is responsible for the running the next question. Okay. Uh, this one, just to check the answer and give us the index of this answer, as you see here. So we'll copy this one, and we need for the test one. Okay. Then this is the report answer, as you see here. He just defining a bundle and putting the required parameter that he wants to send them to the console. Here we're taking the question and sending it to the as a parameter question and uh, answer, sorry. And we adding the time, the, the time for now for answering and uh, an instance to an event and giving them the event ID and the bundle that will need to send it to the server. So we'll copy this one. And some things we will import, things that we need. Okay. We have also the bus score, the same thing, it's defining a bundle and putting the long uh, score. This is predefined events actually. You don't need to define these things. So you just copy this, these things and we're importing them from Huawei. Yeah, you will find the, all these things like uh, predefined events. Now let's taking the strings file that we need. So we'll go to the resource and go to the values and then going to strings and we will copy the thing that we have here. So I'll go opening my resource values and we will Paste these things here and I will remove the topic at one. Okay. We'll see if we have some errors. Okay, we need now to implement the view that's related to the main activity. So we'll open the main activity and we'll go to the uh, layout. main activity and we will copy the UI that related to the main layout okay we will paste this one and we will go to the design as design you will see something like this some buttons that will sending some events to the uh, server at uh, sending some logs so the next we need the settings page so we need the UI for the settings page so we'll copy this name and just layout, new, Android layout, we will paste the name. We'll go to the code. And here you can copy this layout. And we send by pasting them here. And you can check the design to know what's happened. It's just containing an entry and a button that will send the event to the server with the value that exists in the entry. So now we need to take the, the class that related to things activity. So we will copy this name. And we'll go to the, our classes, uh, add a new Java class. Pressing this name, okay. We will copy all this file as it. And you need just to find this thing, okay. Everything is now super fine. Here, as you see, we're just setting the user profile. So when I click at this button, we will set some data or some attributes for the user profile itself, like uh, favorite sport, and we give them this this uh, this uh, this string that we entered at the entry from the text. So. Now we will check our, our everything that we take. He tells me to add this one to our manifest file. So we will add the activity at the manifest file. Okay. Then he told me to modify many class. We make these things. And even finding the only create, we may make this this one. And report the answer. Okay. Uh, actually, all the things we finished them before. So 
we just now need to uh, run our code. So uh, now actually we need to signing the apps before we running it. So so we need to uh, change the package name as you see the ID actually that will connect to the edgy connect so we need to change it as the app id we will use this one okay now we need to sign the app okay we will paste this one okay we need here the uh, key for the that will be generated from the uh, build you can generate signing bundle that will be used when signing your app so we'll copy this one i make this one before and i will pasting them here and at the same level of the app and now we'll click the other thing and everything is uh, configured successfully so it's good now let's run to see the result of our device Here we'll move to the console that we have at our developer account. At the, we have a lot of things actually here, but with uh, our analytics, we go to the real time monitor that will see our events that currently happen. So we're installing the app, we click at the install, and then you will see find this page. We are waiting the loading of uh, analytics when I should click on this button we should sending some logs and events to the server that currently have been at this device so we just waiting this page to be load I will refresh it again okay I guess it's working now. Okay. Now here, as you see, we have zero users and zero events, as you see here. So now we'll start sending some events to the server. We'll send some true false events that we see it before. And we can post some scores and we can open things and adding some things here. And we can click on the save. And we can go to the next question and answering them. As you see here, we're making some events to watching them at the, our console. So now we click at the, enabling the auto refresh and the refresh data. Here you can find we have one user and four events. Sometimes it's taking actually some time to looking at the events. So here you can find the entering activity that we make. And you can find the answers that we're answering them. And you can find the app starts. And we have administration one, as you see here. Uh, after we're refreshing it, actually, we should receive more than four events. So we will make manual refresh again. It's the uh, keeping four events. Okay, let's talk about something else until he taking the new events. If we move to the events tab, as you see here. Here you can find the, all the predefined events that you can use them uh, at your app. And you can create your custom event from here. You can just create at the create button and the custom event. And you can define your custom event and using it in your app at the same way that we're using the previous one. So now we'll go to the real time again. Actually, I told you it's sometimes taking a little bit time to. Uh, Sending the data to the console. So let's making some more events to collect them later. We're sending some things until he refresh the. Okay, now it's working. We received forty one events. 
Here you can find some score. You can find answers, uh, screens. Now, if I go to the app and uninstalling the app and clicking at OK. OK, now I install the app, OK? Then I running it again. Uh, I installing it uh, and proceed the process and we are sending some events now. This is from the second installation. So now we have uh, 62 events. Now we should receive the event that uh, that related to the uninstalled app. We should have uh, count one for uninstalled app. It didn't update actually yet. But let's make some refresh until the sending it. We'll make a manual refresh. Okay, here we were receiving it. As you see, I've uninstalled one. So it will give you a lot of uh, huge data that you need to do. And also you can download the report as Excel file, as you see here. And you can open it, and you can know all the activities that most users are using it in your app, as you see here. So, you can have a, a huge number of data just by using this line, few lines of code. You can also use all these things that we uh, talking about at the presentation. So, this is what we have. Also, you can find the location, the device model, and the app uh, that being used. So this is what we have today about the analytics kit. As you see, a few lines of course will give you a huge, uh, a huge information about your users and uh, what the interesting part of <clears throat> your app. So I hope, I hope you're enjoying watching this uh, code lab and uh, this presentation uh, this is what we have today uh, i hope you're enjoying these sessions and these presentations and code labs um, and i hope this session uh, make everyone uh, know more about hms and uh, this amazing kits that we have uh, as you see a few line of codes you can get a huge number of uh, a huge a huge number of data that is to your users uh, and if anyone needs any questions we can answer your questions actually i check the question tab we don't have any questions uh, until now so as i was uh, as i see we don't have so Um, if anyone has a question, please write it down on the question section. Okay, okay. Thank you, Omar. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. See you next Thank workshop. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.